Paul Pawlikowski's film Cold War is one of the most breathtaking visual achievements in recent cinema. A perfectly crafted sensory experience which engulfs its viewers from start to finish. The film is a musical odyssey which guides us through the lives of two lovers and the inevitable bond which they share towards each other in their country set in a very tumultuous time in Europe's history. In this video essay, I will be exploring how Polikovsky creates this bond through a musical leitmotif and how he introduces us to the film's occurring themes of love and heartbreak. Right from the start, we are shown a montage of people performing old Polish folk songs. They are performing them for Victor, a musical director who is trying to resurrect the spirit of Poland and the Polish people after the devastation from the Second World War. The songs we hear seem raw and uninhibited and talk of misfortune and humorous anecdotes of the nation's people. But soon after, we are introduced to a girl in a dilapidated house singing a melancholic song about forbidden love. Dwa serduszka, cztery oczy, oj, 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 co płakały we dnie w nocy, oj, 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 czorne oczka, co płaczecie, że się spotkać nie możecie, że się spotkać. Nie możecie, oj, oj, oj. Without any instruments, using just her voice, she grabs everyone's attention and sets the whole story in a particular mood. Pawlikowski makes a great choice by juxtaposing the girl with the rest of the performers, whose delivery seems rehearsed and sort of mechanic due to decades of experience. The girl's youth and conviction while performing such a serious song is what catches us off guard and makes it stand out. We then see Victor as he auditions singers and dancers and prepares for the grand premiere. There he meets and falls in love with Zula, an enigmatic and feisty young woman with a troubled past who develops the same feelings for him. Their blooming love for each other is mirrored in one of the most beautiful performances of the Two Hearts leitmotif heightened by the angelic voices of the female choir in the background. The scene shows us Victor's full artistic control and love for his nation. It is youthful, bright and vibrant and manages to get into the hearts of everyone present. The performance ends up being a huge success, so obviously the politics has to get involved. Soon after, the Mazurik troupe is used as a tool for propaganda and are forced to sing about the Stalinist ideology which gets under the artist's skin. Seeing as he has no chance to change anything, he tries to elope with Zula to France, but due to her circumstance, she decides to stay behind. A couple of years later, we see him in Paris, performing jazz covers of the Polish folk songs. He's married to a woman he doesn't love, and decides to meet with Zula in a cafe where they reveal that they still love one another. 
but their confessions don't really make much difference because they are living completely different lives. She's still performing around Europe with the troupe, while his life is one of the Polish outcast. Sometime after their first meeting, while in Yugoslavia, Richter comes to see Zula perform. She sees him in the audience and is visibly shaken. While Zula gets ready for another performance, we see Victor being forced out of the theater and put on a train back to France because of his persona non grata status. Zula sings the light motif, which they made popular, but Victor is nowhere to be seen. The mood of the initial song couldn't be replicated, which implies that their relationship will never be the same as it once was. Next time they meet is in Paris. Zula is a married woman now, and Victor is seemingly single. They end up in a jazz cafe and perform a slow and melancholic jazz rendition of the familiar song. It is heartbreaking and dreamy at the same time. It puts the audience in their shoes perfectly by reinterpreting the tune which we've grown so accustomed to. Their love is still there, but you can see the mark those years apart had left on them. In the middle of the film, we see Victor and Zula living together in Paris. They are with one another, but at the end of the day, they are still strangers in a foreign country, as if their roots were plucked from the ground and planted in soil on which they can grow. Zula gets a record deal where she is expected to perform the Polish folk song, not only in a different arrangement, but in a language that is not even hers. I have a lot of your text. Ah oui, quel texte De ma chanson Ah, bah ben oui. Le pendule a tué le temps. C'est joli, mais je ne comprends pas. Ah bon C'est une métaphore. Pour dire quoi Que le temps ne compte pas quand on s'aime. She doesn't want to do it and is eager to go back to Poland. But Victor can't. So she stays, makes the record but it ends up being completely devoid of any substance. By that point, we never see her actually perform it. When we hear the finished version, it is at a listening party, and all we see is a close-up of Zula, miserable with a drink in her hand, listening to the words of a song she doesn't even understand. <laughs> This moment is one of the most powerful because here we get to see how alienated she truly feels. Soon they start resenting each other, and it all culminates with Zula running away to Poland. He is left spiritless and drained. In that moment, he is faced with a challenge. Will he go after her and pay the price for his past actions in Poland? Or will he stay in France and live the rest of his life hoping she will come back to him? The leitmotif is never to be heard again, but the undeniable magnitude it leaves on him is what guides the film into one of the most heartfelt endings in recent cinema. To find out what happens, I recommend you guys watch the film yourself. Cold War is a filmmaking marvel. Seeing how Pawlikowski tells his story through camera work and music is nothing short of astounding. Instead of telling us how his actors feel and think, he shows us and transports us into a world which deals with heartbreak, 
passion, and patriotism with such nuance and dedication. It is rare to see a film be so honest about these subject matters. Polakowski's film shows us a perplexing love affair between two people, between a person and their country, and how powerfully it can manifest itself in our hearts. Thank mm-hmm. you.